In a recent appearance, Waters explained that the Trump administration isn't simply wrong on the issues, it's a front for the Klan. I'm cleaning out the White House. This person who does not respect you, this dishonorable human being who cheats everybody, this dishonorable human being who will lie at the drop of a hat, this dishonorable human being who have the alt-right and the KKK and everybody else inside his cabinet. I'm going to say impeach 45 every day. Impeach 45 every day. That's not political rhetoric. It's a war cry. It's an incitement to hysteria and maybe worse. If you really thought the Ku Klux Klan controlled the White House, what would you do? What wouldn't you do? We're the adults in the Democratic Party. It used to be they were in leadership, but not anymore. Nancy Pelosi is the most powerful Democrat in the House of Representatives. She was once speaker, you'll remember. She may soon be again. Pelosi isn't just tolerant of illegal immigration. She is now explicitly encouraging it. Watch this. The list goes on and on about uh, uh, how we want to advance and protect the dreamers until we can pass the bill. Their families did a great thing for our country, bringing these kids here who are working, who are in the military, who are in school, who are uh, uh, a brilliant part of our future. Breaking our laws is now a great thing, says one of our country's chief lawmakers. People who ignore the legislation Congress writes should be congratulated for it, says one of Congress's top leaders. That's more than perverse. This is what it looks like when the people in charge of a country decide to destroy it. Their motive? It's always the same. Political power. They lost it. They want it back, even if it means hurting the people they are sworn to protect. Democrats alienated the middle of the country during the Obama years, but they have no plans to convince those voters to return. Instead, they plan to replace them with new and more reliable voters from abroad and damn the consequences for the rest of us. That's why they're far more upset about DACA than they are about the opioid crisis. It's why they care more about preventing a border wall than they do about raising the wages of American workers. It's not complicated. What's amazing is that they're now saying it out loud. Michael Starr Hopkins is a Democratic attorney, a contributor to The Hill and The Huffington Post, and he joins us tonight from New York. Michael, thanks a lot for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Tucker. So it seems like kind of a profound moment where you have the chief lawmaker of one of the two main political parties mm -hmm. explicitly encouraging people, congratulating them for breaking the law. No, I, Can, that's not what Nancy Pelosi was doing. Well, she just said it. We just ran the tape. She said what you did was a great thing by breaking the law. No, she wasn't saying by breaking the law you were doing a great thing. She was saying that by taking a dangerous journey, by trying to make sure that you made the life of your children better, improving the life and the plot of your family, that, that was, that's an honorable thing to do. Most Americans who came to this country didn't, just, didn't come before 1920, or rather came before 1920 when there weren't immigration laws that are codified like they are now. Okay, but it's not 1920. 1920. It's 2017, and there are immigration laws passed by the Congress over which she presides. Mm -hmm. And she's congratulating people for breaking a law that her body passed. I mean, you could make the same case. Someone robs a liquor store, and you say, "Boy, you you know, you took a lot of risks. There was a security guard there. You know, you had to drive the getaway car at high speed. You still break. I mean, and that may all be true, but you still broke a law. And so, for a lawmaker to encourage people to do that." It seems like something very different than I've ever seen before. Well, Do you not perceive that? One, I wouldn't say that she's encouraging people to break the law. I think she's saying that what they did, the act of coming across the border to ensure the life and the plot of their family, is something that you know we should all honor and think about the risks that they're willing but, but, to take. But why? But hold on. Again, you're alighting over the point that I'm making because I think it's an important one. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not attacking. DACA recipients, I'm merely saying you have a lawmaker, someone in charge of laying down what is legal and what is not legal in our country, ignoring the fact that these people broke the law that she passed. But I don't think so, that she's ignoring that. That's what I'm saying. She's but, not but, but why wouldn't she say, as all politicians have until this moment, look, illegal immigration is wrong. You shouldn't break the law to get here. But, you know, you're hardworking people or whatever. But she doesn't even say that. The party doesn't even say well, that anymore. That was, a, that was about a 10 second it. clip of what no, she said during the press conference. No, you watched the whole thing. Well, when was the last time? Okay, but I, I did you watch it, and she didn't say that. And you're seeing again and again, I can spend a whole hour playing tape for mm -hmm. you, Democrats applauding people for breaking 
immigration law. That's and not I what they're applauding. Democrats are not applauding people for breaking the law. What we're saying is this is a country of immigrants. We are all here because someone came from somewhere else. And that the idea that people would risk their lives for a better life is at the essence of what we are as a people, at the essence so of the country. So that's more important. So, but, but again, what about the law? I mean, I'm not just being, look, mm -hmm. it's not just me. I'm just a talk show host. This is a lawmaker. This is someone whose and whole right, job right it is. Right now, we're debating the law. We're debating uh, the DREAM Act and how we can go about fixing these laws. Because right now, right. our system is broken. And I think that okay, that's something but, Democrats, Republicans agree. But you agree. can say that, oh, okay, but I think everyone agrees our tax code mm -hmm. is broken. And all of us have opinions about the ways in which it's broken. How would you feel if a member of Congress got up and said to people who are facing charges for tax evasion, you did a great thing. You, you know, I support what you did. It was brave what you did. You wanted to feed your family so you didn't pay those taxes. Wouldn't you say, well, wait, hold on a minute. Our I tax mean, code's I, I rotten, get your point, but, like, but that's you a can't, false equivalency. My point, it's not a false equivalency. It's it what is we a, just financial, were a financial it. law versus someone endangering their life for their family, are, those are two different things. Oh, you, really? You, you because in my, I have a family, family, and I can promise you that financial economic concerns are the main concerns. How am I going to feed these people? How am I going to pay for this house? They got to go to school. You want to go to summer camp? It's expensive. Like, these are the core questions people face, and they revolve around the tax code. These are American citizens. Wouldn't you say, I know I would say, mm -hmm. if I saw the Speaker of the House say, you know what, if you don't like the tax laws, just ignore them. I would say, whoa, the system's going to fall apart if you do that. You don't see this at all? But what we're doing here is focusing on 10 seconds of Nancy Pelosi's uh, well, comments not. today instead of focusing on the grander issue, which is what are we going to do about DACA? What are we going to do about the DREAM Act? How are well, we going to ensure that these 800,000 people are are brought into the American experience, brought out of the shadows? Those well, are I don't know. Issues. Maybe some of us think they shouldn't be part of the American experience. I have a right to think that. And when you start framing things as a battle between good and evil, you anyone who disagrees with me, I no, didn't. not at all. No, no, I believe in the law. I'm an American. Like the whole war point. cry. And that the only reason Democrats were doing this was because we wanted their votes. We when do their when votes, you have someone, too. Oh, but let's be, let's be, I mean, let's be totally honest here. Yeah. If you have someone saying the cabinet of the United States government is controlled by the Ku Klux Klan, if I really thought that, I think I would quit my job and work full time Listen, to overthrow Steve, that group. Steve like, Bannon was in the White House and he said himself he was an ally of the alt right. Of the Klan? Like what? I mean, let's come on, let's like drop the pretense. That's okay. insane, it's untrue, and it's inciting people to lunacy. You can't say that, it's just not true. Well, She's a member of Congress, you're not allowed to talk like that. Where's the consistency? Donald Trump says ridiculous thing after ridiculous thing, and it, you don't care whether it's true. Now well, all of a actually, sudden- Actually, do, I do care whether it's true, and if, and if Trump ever says that some group he doesn't like is controlled by the Klan, I'd say, you know, well, slow down, she, man. He said that Obama was the founder of ISIS and that he was a Kenyan. Come on. I mean, I get, I get where you're coming from. That he but was that the founder a, of ISIS and a Kenyan. Both untrue. <laughs> but you have a sitting member of Congress who's like a folk. I mean, I guess is the, is the point you're making that it's okay now? I mean, what's the... What's the point that you're making? I'm, my point is that I would appreciate consistency on both sides. So as long I'm, as Trump says things you don't like, then it empowers people like Maxine Waters to like say totally insane things like that? Is that well, the no. standard? Well, there's a Maxine Waters comment about the Ku Klux Klan and alt-right being in the White House. I think that that's actually a legitimate conversation that we should be having because Donald Trump has surrounded himself with people who I think Democrats should be scared of, I think Republicans should be scared of, people who have tendencies to not only cite Breitbart in alt-right uh, literature, but also uh, echo some of the tones. I mean, I'm glad Come that-, on that I mean, look, the, you know, stuff you disagree with, but I read Breitbart, I know most people who work over there, there's no clans. I mean, the Klan is like, that's just way over the line, in my opinion. I, I think the Klan has become kind of like Kleenex. It's a generic term that we use for- I think it's totally crazy. And when we get civil nuttiness, we can point to people like that and say, that's why, in my view. Michael, thank you for joining us. Hey, Tucker, thanks for having me.